Israel says it's under direct attack by Iran. A military spokesman says drones are on the way, but they could take several hours to arrive. Tehran has repeatedly threatened retaliation after this month's strike on its consulate in Syria. I'm Michael Oku. Welcome. We begin this hour with some breaking news. The Israeli military says that Iran has launched an attack on Israel. Army spokesperson Daniel Hagari says that dozens of Iranian drones are headed towards Israel. He says that Israeli defenses are ready to shoot them down and told residents to take shelter if they hear sirens. Iran has launched drones from its territory towards the territory of the state of Israel. We are monitoring the threat in the airspace. It is a threat that takes several hours to reach the territory of the State of Israel. The IDF and the Air Force are carrying out the plan we have prepared. Now, just a short time before the attack was officially announced, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released this video message. Israeli citizens, in recent years and even more so in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for the possibility of a direct attack from Iran. Our defense systems are deployed. We are prepared for any scenario, both in defense and attack. The state of Israel is strong. The Israeli army is strong. The public is strong. Again, it bears repeating, uh, Iran has launched an attack on Israel by drone, according to the Israeli military. Uh, DW correspondent Tanya Kramer joins us now from Jerusalem. Uh, Tanya, what do we know about this attack? Well, as you said, it has been confirmed. There were first uh, uh, media reports uh, in Iran that drones had been launched, and it has been confirmed by the Israeli military that those drones are on their way, apparently also in several uh, waves. Now, they're slow moving, as we have heard. Um, their scope is still uh, unknown, but there are more than dozens, as we are hearing here from uh, sources also here in the Israeli uh, media, and of course also their destination, uh, their targets, rather, uh, whether they will uh, be destined to hit uh, military or softer targets like uh, civilian uh, targets. Now, the army and the whole country, I have to say, had been on high alert already uh, for days. And again, today it, it has become, I uh, you know, in the afternoon emergency, uh, got new emergency guidelines were issued as well. And now, of course, tonight this uh, attack has been launched. It's unprecedented, of course, to see this now uh, unfold here tonight. Tanya, of course, we've heard from some of the uh, Israeli leadership, but how else is Israel responding? Well, the country is uh, on high alert. This is not entirely, uh, entirely a surprise attack. I mean, the uh, threats by Iran uh, had been there since uh, the attack on the consulate on April uh, 1st, uh, with the Supreme Iran Supreme Leader Khamenei saying um, that um, this has gone too far, a red line had been uh, crossed, and that there will be retaliation. Uh, so the country has been uh, put on high alert. We have the fighter jets in the air, the naval forces are on high alert, and of course the aerial defense uh, systems. Now now the question is, of course, uh, how many of those drones uh, Israel can intercept. They will certainly also get the help of uh, the United States. They also have moved uh, some of their defense systems uh, here in the region. And of course, there's also the question, um, will it be just drones? Uh, some military analysts mm. here are saying they could be followed by uh, missiles or ballistic missiles uh, or uh, other weapons. We understand authorities are calling on the public to follow instructions of the, um, the Home Front Command. Have any instructions been given yet? And if so, what are they saying? 
Well, the Home Front this uh, late uh, this afternoon or early evening issued uh, a guideline um, asking, you know, people, first of all, there would be no educational activities in the coming days. That was already an indication uh, that there was, you know, maybe something uh, uh, coming. But they said as well that once uh, sirens uh, will go off in the country, people have to take a shelter. Uh, I came here through uh, Jerusalem this evening. Um, it is a very empty at the moment. There's still some people, uh, of course, in the street, but uh, there's a lot of, you know, uh, worry now, of course, what will happen here in the coming hours. But certainly uh, people anticipate, uh, you know, um, that they will have to take shelter when the sirens here went, will, will go off. We don't know yet, again, what's the scope of this attack, uh, where those uh, drones, uh, where they will be going, uh, the targets. Uh, there is the hope that they will go rather to military targets, but uh, this is a very, very tense situation right now here in Israel. Very tense, we understand, and the immediacy of this is the news right now. But I want you to indulge us just for a moment, Tanya, and give us sort of a, a larger perspective here. How have we reached this point where the reality on the ground is Israel not facing increased aggression at the border from one of Iran's proxies, but rather a direct attack from Tehran? Well, all of this uh, came, I mean, Iran and Israel have been involved in what was called here or described here often as a shadow war um, through uh, the proxies. But uh, on April 1st, uh, there has been an attack and Israel has not taken direct responsibility for it uh, on the, the consulate in uh, Damascus, uh, killing uh, high uh, and high uh, Iranian commander. And uh, ever since, uh, the uh, Iranian regime has said this cannot go unpunished. This will, uh, uh, there will be retaliation for it. And ever since, there has been uh, the uh, anticipation that actually Iran will retaliate. But still, it wasn't clear whether it will go through its proxies, like the Houthis from Yemen, uh, Hezbollah from uh, southern Lebanon, uh, or from some militias in Iraq. And this mm. could also still be coming, that there could be a multi-front war. But right now, we are seeing uh, these multiple drones uh, being on their way to Israel, and we have to wait and see you know, when they arrive and how Israel will intercept them and how they will deal with it. You've touched on this a little bit already, Tanya, but gi give us a sense of how prepared Israel is to combat an attack from Iran. Well, the army says they have all the plans uh, ready and they have been readying for this uh, certainly for a long time. But certainly uh, since April 1st, uh, as I said, it was it's not entirely coming uh, as a surprise. So it has its different uh, um, air defense systems, among them the Iron Dome, but also others. And we also heard from the US that Israel will not stand alone. So that indicates they will also probably get help uh, in uh, intercepting those drones. It will become more complicated, uh, military analysts here are saying, when you know there will be a multi-front war. Don't forget, we have a war in Gaza. We also have uh, border, cross-border fire uh, and uh, high tensions at the, in southern Lebanon and northern Israel between Hezbollah and uh, Israel, of course, and it could still, you know, go further than uh, these drones, but that alone, it's an attack from Iran on Israel. This is unprecedented. We haven't seen this. So uh, we have to wait and see in the next hour how this will unfold. Our many thanks to uh, Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem. Uh, Tanya, we may see you later. Many thanks. Let's cross over now to our correspondent in Washington, uh, Stefan Simons. Uh, Stefan, uh, the U.S. President Joe Biden has cut short a weekend trip to Delaware to return to the White House. We also understand his defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, earlier spoke to his Israeli counterpart. What has the U.S. publicly said about this attack thus far? Absolutely right. President Biden is way, uh, on his way back to the White House to meet with his uh, National Security Council staff, National Security Council and advisors. Um, as you write, also, uh, Defense Secretary Austin Lloyd has talked to the, his Israeli counterpart, but also to other 
uh, partners and allies, uh, Arab countries and Arab mm. counterparts, uh, secretaries of defense in Arab countries over the last few hours. So the U.S. is and was, as you may remember, yesterday warning that this could be happening very soon, that Iran could um, to come to those strikes. Uh, uh, rather sooner than later, the president said yesterday during a press conference. He also said, don't, don't do it, Iran. But of course, um, those calls for restraint have not been heeded by uh, Iran now. So, now, what is uh, going to happen now here in the U.S.? They will analyze what's going on right now. As, of, as you said before, and as uh, the guest said before, um, there is a drone strike going on. Those drones are traveling very, very slowly. Um, uh, and... Israel, Israeli defense forces should be able to take those out. If there's more, that's a problem. That's a problem. All of this is a major problem for the United States and for the mm. White House because it was the declared will of the White House to de-escalate, to not let this happen, and that Iran now strikes directly. A direct strike or effort to strike Israel from Iranian soil is at, as unprecedented and historic it is and therefore constitutes a big problem and challenge for the White House. Yeah, we've all been anticipating this for days, but it's in the details where things get sticky. Washington has pledged to support Israel's defense. Uh, how will it do that? Well, in the last few uh, days, I want to say weeks, the U.S. has moved parts, military parts, defensive, uh, in defensive nature in the region. Um, a high-ranking military official was in the last few days in Israel to discuss actually exactly that. What happens if, uh, how are we prepared, how can we help, how can the United States help uh, Israel in case Iran uh, strikes Israel? And the the problem there is if, if, it, if it's all drones and nothing else, and it is, as we also pointed out before, well publicized by Iran. That's a sign, and the U.S. took it that way, a sign that Iran wants Israel to know to be prepared that some retaliation comes. Now, mm. how uh, far these very tight rope they are walking Iran with m adding more retaliation measures, that's a problem, and that is what the U.S. is prepared for with military assets. When I say this, that means defensive nature. That doesn't mean U.S. troops on the ground. No boots on the ground. The president was uh, keen on this. So I would say intelligence, radar, early detection, and all of those kind of assets. Let's walk back a little bit, Stefan, and, and, and get a full perspective on this. What steps has the U.S. been taking to prevent this situation escalating into a wider regional war? Well, as you know, the United States has no direct uh, diplomatic relationships with uh, Iran. The Swiss handle this. But, of course, there is uh, communication through back doors and back channels. And the U.S. was always very, very clear to say and to warn Iran from anything that could really blow this up, blowing this up means widen this conflict, make this a, a significant bigger, significantly bigger regional conflict. Now, mm -hmm. what has the U.S. done in terms of being prepared? It is only in one direction, and that is militarily defensive, militarily and to the benefit of Israel. So the president said, the White House said, despite our difference with Benjamin Netanyahu and the current prime minister uh, in, in, in Israel and about what's going on in Gaza and the lack of aid and so on, uh, we will be ironclad, uh, gladly support Israel. Our support will be ironclad. We will stand by our ally Israel uh, no matter what. Um, but that's the gist of it. That's the most of it. So there is a declaration. U.S. will help Israel, whatever comes. And we don't know what comes yet. If the, Iran is launching more than just slow moving drones which can be um, taken out and anticipated fairly easily by Israeli or even US assets, air defense assets, um, then this is a really different picture. And then we, there is, we have to all wait and see and there's uh, time to pass before we can actually say like, okay, what is the US actually now doing? But again, right. It, 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 it serves us all well to remember, and I'm sorry uh, if I take an extra second here, that this is an ongoing situation, that we do not have all the answers or a clear picture of what is going on. But again, the U.S. says whatever happens, they're staying with Israel and will do anything they possibly can to defend Israel from any attack by Iran or anybody else. Our deep thanks, as always, to uh, DW correspondent Stefan Simons in Washington.